Hey everyone, the Yannick Place here. Welcome back to another quick tutorial. So in our last video, we learned how to set up a Oracle always free Minecraft server. And today we are going to import a custom world. We're just going to take one of my single player worlds and convert them and make sure that we can play that in multiplayer. And we also going to look at how can we install some plugins there. And we're just going to install one simple mod because the principle is always going to be the same. So the very first thing that we are going to have to do is we have to go into putty and we have to go and we have to stop our server. So we're stopping the server on putty, but the Oracle server itself, we are leaving in a running status because we have to connect to this server to replace some of our files. Next, we're heading over to FileZilla and we are downloading the client version here. Click on download and then we are just going to take the free version here. Now, if you install FileZilla, make sure that you don't install any of the additional offers that you have here. So just go ahead and decline all of those. And once we're done, we are going to start FileZilla. So now that FileZilla is open, we are going to add our IP address over at the host. Username, we're going to use OPC and we are going to use port 22. Next, we go into edit, to settings. And then here you find SFTP, click on that and then click on add key file. Now we're navigating to the area where we saved our SSH keys. I saved those on the desktop in a folder called SSH demo keys. And in here we have three different keys. We have the putty key that we use to connect with putty. We have the public key and then we have our main key. And that's the one that we're going to use. So the one that ends in dot key, you click on open and then on OK. And next we are clicking on quick connect. And if you did everything the same way as I did, then it should now connect you to the files that you have on your server. So now we are logged in and here on the right hand side, you can see all the files that we have on our cloud server right now. So you can see things like the server chart that we created the last time, our end user license agreement, and also things that already got auto created, whitelist and uh, all that wonderful stuff. Then in here, you have one folder that is called world. And in this world, you can find all the folders and the level information that you also can find in one of your single player worlds. So if you just uh, move this one over here so you can see it on the screen. You can see we have the same folders in here. We have the same data in here. And what we have to do is we have to remove this one here and then replace it with the one that we have over here. And as always, we are going to create a copy of our data. So I just right click over here and I copy it. So now we have this file here. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to rename it to world. And if that isn't called exactly the same, then it is not going to work. Now we right click here and we are just going to delete this one here. And now we can just click and drag our world over here and make sure that you're not dropping it in one of those folders here. So just drop it over here. And now everything is going to upload. So as you can see, our queued files is empty, failed transfers, we don't have anything in, and successful, we have 114. And now if we go in world here, you can see that everything is back in here. So let's head over to Putty and let's copy in our start command. And I'm just gonna leave it on uh, one gigabyte for now because all we're going to do is we're just going to test to make sure that everything works. And as you can see, everything is now started up. So let's just do a quick test. Let's check on a seed. And I, well, I didn't memorize the whole number, but I know that this seed here is now different from the seed that we had before. As you can see, when I scroll up here earlier, as I was running it, we had uh, in this seed number here. And then we stopped the server. So you can see the seed changed. So let's go ahead and sign in really quick to make sure that everything 
looks correct. So as you can see, server is online here. So let's go ahead and go in and let's see if our world changed. Here on the left side, you can see I am joining right now. And then as you can see on the right side, we are now in a custom world. A shameless plug for our mystery build swap series that I have going on together with The Last Yeti. If you feel like watching some more videos with me in it, uh, those here would be a great one to get started. Now that everything is started up, let's go and run a few commands. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're typing in OP and then your Minecraft username. So that makes you the operator of the server. Uh, probably already did that before. Uh, yes, as you can see, the play player is already an operator, but that means that now I can run all of the commands also in Minecraft itself. It always gives you the good little tool tips to help you type them in. So we're going to do them in here. So we're hiding slash whitelist and then we are doing on. Nothing changed here because I already whitelisted the server. Whitelist add and then you type in a username and now the last Yeti is able to connect to this server here. Now I'm also going to OP him so that he has the same rights to change things in here and use all of the commands. So we have set that and then you can pretty much set all the things that you want. You can turn fire spread off, you can turn uh, the day night cycle off, you can turn the weather off. So you now as the OP have full control over everything. But that is not the goal of this tutorial to tell you what we're going to do here. So let's go into the second part where we are going to install a mod. And as you can see here in the bottom left corner, there's an icon that says that the voice chat isn't working because the server side plugin is not installed. So let's go ahead and install that. Now, simple voice chat is actually a pretty good example because for that we have to install Fabric. And if you installed Fabric before, you remember that you installed it through this window here. Now, over here we have the server section and the server that we're running is a 1.18.1. So now we have to tell them where we would like that installed. And I'm just going onto the desktop and I am creating a new folder call that server tutorial and that is where we are going to install that so now that the installation is completed we can see that well we couldn't find a valid server char because of course that is not the server folder because the server folder is already on our oracle cloud and then down here you see the new command to start the server with fabric so what we are going to do is we are just going to copy that and then we can click on done and now if we go into this folder you can see that we have the libraries and we have a new server launch char so let's head over to putty and stop our server because we cannot work on a running server then over in file sellout, make sure that you are in back in the main route where you have the server char so that you're getting out of the world. And then we can copy those two files here over and upload them. So now we have the libraries in here and we have the fabric server launch char. So if we go back into Putty, we now have to start it up with the Fabric Server Launch Char. So where before we were starting it up with Server.Char, now we have to start it with Fabric Server Launch Char. And as you can see, again, we started successfully. So we are able to start our Fabric Server. And if we would log into the server now, we can see that it is a fabric version now. So as you can see here in the top left, it now is a fabric server. So we can disconnect here and we go ahead and we stop our server again. 
And then we're going to worry about installing the mod itself. Now, on all of the mods, just make sure to read through everything because some of them, like simple voice chat, you have to go ahead and you have to open some ports. Uh, other ones, it's pretty much just a uh, installation of a mod like what you would do if you install a mod on your single player world. So let's head back into our server tutorial folder and create a new folder called mods. And now we are just going to drop all of the mods in there that we need. So for this one here, we're just going to drop in the voice chat, the fabric version, and then we head over to FileZilla, make sure that we are in the main root, and then we are grabbing our mods folder and drop our mods folder in here. But if we go back to our wiki, you can see that we have to make sure that the correct ports are open. Now, if I remember correctly, we already opened this port, but let's go ahead and double check that. So for that, we go back to our Minecraft server, go into our subnet, into the default security list. And now here we have all of the open ports and down here we can see the UDP uh, 25565. UDP uh, 24. Okay, so we don't have this one in. So let's go ahead and add a new ingress rule. We leave it on CIDR. Here we had that 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, .0, 0 slash 0. And we are going to the UDP protocol. And then we are just going to copy this uh, port number in. In a destination port. And then we add this ingress rule. And now we can see this port here is open as well. Now, if you remember from the last time, we also had to open up the IP itself. So let's head over to Putty again. And again, I'm going to put this command down into the description. Just make sure that we have the correct port here and UDP. And then we are also going to run this command here to reload our firewall. Also here, it came back as a success. So let's go ahead and start our server again and see if everything works or if we are going to have an issue. You can see up here, the voice chat is already in. So as you can see, we did not got any error in regards of the voice chat. So when we start the server up, we now should have a working voice chat. And as you can see in the bottom left, the missing plugin disappeared. So now we're just muted, but I could just go ahead and turn that on. So as you can see, the microphone shows up in the bottom left. So if Yeti would be logged in right now, he would hear what I am saying. I really hope this tutorial helped you. We did a lot of different things, but if you have any more questions, please just go ahead and put them down into the comments and I will try to help you figure it out. Thank you for watching. I hope I see you at my next video. Goodbye.